Hello, my friends. I am Brother Martin. I was born August 29, 1937, on a farm in southern Minnesota near a small village by the name of Sleepy Eye. I was the fifth member of the family. There were nine of us, so I have four siblings older than me and four younger than me. My father was a farmer, and that's all I ever wanted to become, a farmer. When I finished grade eight, uh, my mother wanted me to go to high school. It was not required, but I kept saying, no, I will not go to school. I absolutely hated school. So I kept saying no, and she kept insisting that I go until mid-August. I finally said, okay, I will go, but I'll quit after one month if I don't like it. In high school, I all of a sudden had, there were 56 of us, so I had classmates finally, and I fell in love with high school. In my third year, my buddy asked me to take chemistry with him, Her, hearing that it's fun, explosions and everything, so I did. Well, I fell in love with chemistry, so much so that I decided I won't be a farmer, I want to be a teacher. And I really wanted to, even then, wanted to present the subject to other kids and have them appreciate it as much as I did at that time. So I got a job at school, after school, cleaning the building. And I got to know the Franciscan sisters uh, in a very different way than you would ordinarily uh, know your regular teachers. So all of a sudden it dawned on me, I want to be a teacher, these women are teachers, I wonder, if, I wonder if there's something like that for men. So I finally asked one of the sisters and he said, yes, we have brothers. First time I've heard that term. We have Franciscan brothers, we have Dominican brothers, Benedictine brothers, Jesuit brothers. She asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to teach like you guys. These sisters happened to run a small college for girls in the same little town where the brothers had a college for boys. So I wrote a letter to the brothers. I had, didn't know a single name. I just, dear brothers, I want to join you guys. What do I do? And so it ended up, I became a brother and I'm still at it 62 years later. So now I'm living with men who have the same uh, inspiration, the same ideas as I have. We pray together, we socialize together, we eat together, we do the same kind of work. So we have this support. That's probably the best thing about our life, is that constant support that you get from all of these men that you live with. And it makes no difference whether you're living with 10 guys or 20 guys or two guys, and I've done it, I've done everything. I started living with 125 at one time. When I first started teaching, we had 44. For many years, there were just two of us. Now here at De La Salle, we're living with 20, 30 sometimes. So that's the best part of the brother's life. Our basic schedule, uh, you know, we get up quite early. We have prayers at six, followed by uh, mass and meditation. And then we're off, all of us are off to our various jobs. Lunchtime is, depends on where you are, at the schools where you're working. You get home, you relax, you might read the paper, you might socialize a bit or just rest. We have evening prayers around uh, six o'clock, followed by dinner. And then after dinner, most of us, uh, unless we have nothing to do the next day, we'll go to our rooms, get ready for the next day's work and so forth, or go to sleep early. In the house, we also have jobs, various jobs. 
So right now they've appointed me as the subdirector of the house. Uh, our director is Brother Dennis, and whenever he's not around, I have to make all the decisions. I'm also the econome, which means I'm in charge of the food in the house, uh, the purchasing and what kind of food the brothers want and so forth. We really have lay people who do all the purchasing, but we do tell them we need more of this or we need more of that. And then finally, I'm also in charge of the brothers' studies, foreign brothers. Uh, this year, I think there are going to be about 11 of them. So I've been helping them with their English pronunciation, their grammar, and now they want me to overlook their course of studies, making sure they're on time with what they're doing, they're not dropping out of classes, they're getting good grades and so forth, and reporting back to their various provincials in their home countries. Teaching chemistry is probably the most fun I've ever had. Doing things for kids, surprising them. Uh, I don't know if I can use the term shocking, but certainly uh, waking them up with different explosions and different things. I had a demonstration almost every day that had something to do with the topic I was teaching. So they were always on their toes about what I do. Taking a very difficult subject and making it clear and simple to students and when their eyes light up and they realize they understand the difficult thing, that is a joy. That it's difficult to explain to someone else. You have achieved something with those students. But besides chemistry or science, there's so much more that you do with kids. Uh, you teach them about life and what's good and what's not good and how you should live and what you should do and what you not should do. That comes automatically with uh, any of the classes that you teach. That's the best part of teaching. Then I came to Manila and I taught at DLSU and then at Sobel and now also at Araneta, although I'm not teaching at either of these two places. The one thing you see, particularly at Sobel, is the Lasallian spirit. I don't think you can find this kind of spirit in any other school whether it's in the States or whether it's here in the Philippines. Zobel just shines with this Lasallian spirit that all of the teachers seem to have. You know, as I go around the different Lasalle schools in the Philippines, and I say, I do some work at Zobel. Yes, we hear about Zobel. Zobel is known by all of these other schools, and it's known for excellence, and that's what we have here at Zobel. This kind of excellence, however, is also found in many of our schools. You know, when the brothers start something, they may start with something which isn't very good, but give them a few years' time, it becomes excellent. The brothers do something to these schools, and our lay partners just chime in and do most of the work for us. When I came to Zobel in the 90s, it was a fairly new school. It was less than 20 years old. And in its growing years, and now I come back and I see the transformation, it's almost startling and it's, it's, it's sort of amazing. So it is that real Italian spirit, friendliness, helping one another. Uh, everyone's trying to do a better job than someone else. And that excellence sh is shown, uh, in it, particularly at this school. 
So Bell right now is standing on a pretty high pedestal, a school that's looked up to. Why? Because we have excellent programs. We have really outstanding teachers. We have teachers who've done amazing jobs internationally. They're recognized as such by the school and awarded as such. Uh, hopefully, what they have done seeps down to all the others that they will also start doing these kinds of excellent things and becoming outstanding members of the faculty. Uh, now, we can't sit on our laurels. If that's all we're going to do and not improve from year to year, uh, we will become stationary, we'll become just a normal school, and eventually we'll fade off and become a school that nobody even, eh, it's just so bell. So our job is to, as, as well as we're doing things right now, everyone has to say, I've got to do even more, I've got to do even more, I've got to do even better, and also get many others to join us. And I'm always hoping that happens, not just at Zobel, at every one of our LaSalle schools around the world.